we celebrate the resurrection. Christ the Lord is risen. Alleluia. A couple of weeks ago, we started what looked like a hopeless and an address journey. Today, we have come to the end of that journey. Today is the greatest Sunday in the Christian calendar because of the newness of life it brings. Today, a new epoch has completely begun. This is because the historical Jesus who suffered, was crucified, died and was buried, has now been glorified. The short story is that Christ has risen in fulfillment of his promise. He said, I will rise on the third day. He, he is risen and therefore the battle is over. The question, would call it the fundamental question that each one of us must ask is, did I resurrect with Jesus? Today's gospel tells us that Jesus left the linen clothes in the grave. In other words, he did not cling to anything worldly. He did not allow anything to hold him down. If we must rise with Christ, we must be equally ready to leave behind our linens. Our linens, we have to leave them behind. We must be ready to refuse to be held down by that we would call death-like. Spiritually, we need to ask ourselves, what is it that has always held me down? What linens do I need to shed off? Shed off. <clears throat> because we may be resurrecting with Christ, but we are carrying the old selves. The atmosphere is new. The songs are new. The liturgy it has changed. But we remain the same, same fellows who are there in the ordinary time. If then we may have gotten stuck, then the question that must be asked is, what are the linens or which linens was I unable to shed? Is it possible to continuously sing Alleluia while my linens are still with me? Through our Lenten observances, we died with Christ. So let us rise with him through the power of the Holy Spirit. God has made the most tremendous promise imaginable. He has promised to raise us from the dead, to give us new heavenly bodies, and then give us eternal life. Therefore, Easter is our proof that God keeps his promises. On these three things stand. Number one, life without the promise is life without the hope. Life without the promise is life without hope. Paul says there is one thing worse than being disappointed by a broken promise. That is, never having had the hope of any promise. One of the things that keeps us going is that hope. I was reading a text uh, on the benefit of having hope in our lives that uh, if we die and go to heaven and find that there was no heaven, 
What have I said? I have said that. If we die and go to heaven, and we find out that there was no heaven, and there was no Christ there, will we have lost anything? No, we will not have lost anything because the hope that we held helped us to live a fulfilling life. There is nothing as good as having hope of a better tomorrow, having hope of a higher life and better things, having hope of graduating from one stage to the other. Students who, did, who sat for their uh, KCP or Krasit exam are now hoping, were hoping, um, of course they were hoping to finish, they did finish, that now the hope is that they transit to high school. While in high school, there is hope of transiting to the university. While at the university, there is hope of transiting to the working experience. And then later, status in life changes. In every step of our life, there is hope that is attached to our today to give the taste of our tomorrow. Number two, God's desire is to keep his promise to defeat death. The desire of God is to keep his promise to defeat death. Paul calls death the last enemy. Now, if the last enemy has been defeated, then we have no reason of allowing any type of linen to hold us back. Number three, God's ability to keep his promise is proven by Christ's resurrection. God's ability to keep his promise is proved or proven by, his, by Christ's resurrection, by Jesus' resurrection. Jesus is, as we say in the Bible, the first fruit of the dead or the first one to be raised from the dead. Had God not raised Jesus, we might wonder if he had the power even to raise us. 